Oh, it's time for AI on some of the biggest and most trafficked news sites in the world. According to the GMG Union, which represents journalists at, among other places, Gizmodo, the AV Club, Deadspin, Kotaku, Jezebel, Quartz, The Root, The Takeout, Jalopniks, huge sites. They've revealed that Geo Media, which controls all of those websites, is soon begin going to be conducting a modest test of AI generated content on those sites. Editorial director Merrill Brown assured their employees via email that the trial rollout will produce only a few stories quote, basically built around lists and data. And that quote, these features aren't replacing work currently being done by writers and editors. We hope that over time, if we get these forms of content right and produced at scale, AI will via search and promotion help us grow our audience. But here's what the union said, we're appalled by this news. The hard work of journalists cannot be replaced by unreliable AI programs notorious for creating falsehoods and plagiarizing the work of real writers. This news comes after years of disinvestment in our newsrooms, increased demands on reporters and editors and mass attrition of staff. Furthermore, it comes mere days after the company laid off more than a dozen of our colleagues, including union employees. Management said these features aren't replacing work, remember, but but they have given us no reason over the years to believe this statement. There's only one mode at Geo Media, spend less, extract more regardless of how it affects quality. We strongly urge Geo Media to cease its plan to litter our websites with AI generated content and invest in real journalism done by real journalists. So this is, this is what everybody's expecting. Uh, they're at least announcing it. Some sites just started doing it, but yeah, we expect that they're going to be doing this. AI is cheaper, that's its benefit. The downside is that it can only ever regurgitate what real humans have said. Um, it's not creative, it gets things wildly wrong. It has no personal opinions, no life experience. The sort of things that you think might affect your ability to create compelling content, but, but it is cheaper and it doesn't need healthcare, Brett. So what do you think? I mean, this is like we are who they are who we thought they were. And that's that's just how it's gonna be. I mean, that's the the problem with people is that they have to get food and water and shelter and all that other stuff on naked and afraid. Like and broadband and healthcare, all that. And so obviously they're gonna try doing that. And so you have to examine what your recourse is. And um one thing is you either you you might have to be better than the AI in order to keep your job. Well, at least that's what they'd have you think that you just need to be better than the AI, but that's not necessarily true. Because if you have one good writer who's able to generate like one and a half times the revenue of an AI article by how yeah. good they are at writing that article. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the edge because the AI can generate way more articles. And so yeah. they just hammer blast all those articles out on the internet and they refine it very quickly. Um, and that's where it's so difficult. And then it turns into you just as a writer need to find a, a, your own audience in new interesting ways. And around the margins, there are better ways to do that. There's Substack, there's Patreon, there's all those ways to fund your specific end. But then again, yeah. you now everybody's gonna be flooding toward those because it's the only way out and it's gonna be harder. Um, and and I, I don't know, it's it it turns into a world where they just did, did, you know, for folks in talking about law enforcement, they're like it disincentivizes people to get into that industry. Well, this definitely disincentivizes people to yeah. get into the writing industry and you're not gonna have as good of writing. You're gonna have writing that is by definition, so close to literally everything else on the planet. Cuz that's how the predictive text that's models work. They're yeah. just like, what, what do most articles like this look like? And, and we're not all. adding new talent into that for it to learn from. Yeah, I, and by the way, it already exists. I, I, I mentioned on the show weeks ago, uh, I was watching a video that was like comparing different speaker systems or something. And I realized a couple of minutes in, the voice yeah. was not a human. It was yeah. a robot because they were pronouncing bass, bass. Maybe they were just an idiot, but I think they were a robot. And the issue is um, you can you can use a predictive text model to look at all of the different reviews that already exist for like the iPhone 11. And you can summarize the iPhone 11. But you know what the AI can't do? It can't use the iPhone 15, it can't hold it, it can't carry it around, seeing what it's like in its life, it can't do that. 
And that seems like for Gizmodo kind of a problem. You can summarize all of what actual humans have said about past work. But what's the what's the plan going forward that you just mine the few remaining humans actually touching glass and metal? What about like Jalopnik? An AI can't try out a new car and tell you about its experience. It can't and watch a football game and tell you the emotional highlights. It literally cannot do those things. Right. It seems like a problem. It can you know, it can make mass generated low value summary lists of past stuff, but that's it. It's not human. It's not creative. It doesn't live. It doesn't touch things. It doesn't see things. It's actually worse than that, John, because all you say is true and I agree with it. But also then it comes down to who has the capital to generate stuff in a certain way. Well, in that model, if I was running a, a car company, I would just spam the internet with positive reviews. And have that's all that. I would do. And then that's how you kind of put your, Maybe. Um, in, you know, with volume, you put your, uh, you know, your finger on the needle or whatever. Yeah, and and Maybe. that's that's the other issue is you know all those things I listed that give the that technically would definitionally give more of a leg up to the individual creator. You know the then we all become so dependent on that platform that allows them to get their voice out there, and then over time, what ends up happening is you know your personal creative voice, the same way that it happened to the uh, the the movie industry over time, the individual creative voice just kind of gets squashed in favor of the thing that makes them the most money, especially if it's if if it's uh, depending if ads get in there. If ads get in there, that's a great equalizer that just kind of turns every voice into kind of the same voice that's happy to help yeah. people sell like toys and cars. Exactly. Just to sell. Exactly. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.